Hello, Degolar Lair Tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Dark Sun Shattered Lands with me, Blue Ankylo. I believe this is episode four for you future tubers. This is stream number two, though, for the live tubers. And, uh, yeah, so in between streams and episodes, we did a little bit of learning. Um, I looked up in the, the manual, um, uh, you know those slimes that are down here, Degolar slimes, and perhaps all slimes? Uh, it turns out, and you may have already known this watching in the future, because uh, future tubers know everything, but uh, they're not immune to slashing damage, which swords and axes do, but they are immune to uh, blunt damage, which punching does. Uh, they're also immune to piercing damage, like a, an arrow or I believe a dagger or a spear. Um, so if you're fighting, and I think also the gloves probably do uh, uh, blunt damage. So if you're fighting slimes and you're not doing any damage, that would explain it. Uh, so we learned that, and then what else did we learn? Uh, I learned a little bit about psionics. I don't want to get into the details too much here, but uh, if we look at the psionic casting chart uh, on something that we're a little bit better at, let's say. Um, the numbers at the bottom, detonate, 19 check mark, that's the power score check. That's based on your current stats, like constitution or wisdom, depending on the ability. And then there's a subtraction for how difficult the, uh, the ability is, like this might be con minus three or something. And uh, so there's a chance for that to work, which is, it says 19, that just means you roll a d20. And if you roll a 20, you miss. So it almost always works, but sometimes you, you, you roll a, you roll a 20. Eh? But uh, mostly, that's pretty easy to use. And then the, the PP, of course, that's the uh, cost in your psionic points. So uh, that's how that all works. And if you level up in your psionics and you get to pick to enhance an ability rather than picking a new ability, uh, that increases the power check by one. So we figured this out by looking at some stats. The, um, for Strange Mind, 20 constitution, we have, I guess it's in kinetics, uh, we have 20 minus 3 is the inertial barrier. You can check in the manual, but that's what inertial barrier is supposed to cost. But for China, we have 22, and it costs 20, so that's only a minus 2. And we had accidentally powered up, we, we leveled up this ability once when I misclicked. So that explains it, and unless there's some other effect that I don't know about, that might be all you get for um, enhancing a, a psionic ability. So I would suggest generally learning all the ones you like first, and then if there's something that you want to use that you fail at, you know, repeatedly, um, maybe one of the more offensive ones, like, uh, we don't have it yet, but the dominate creature or something, you could probably upgrade that to work much more reliably, and that would be good. Anyway, that's enough, uh, you know, business. Let's go explore this, uh, this happy area. So we sort of started in the bottom left corner, I, th I think. It sort of looks like it. And, uh, I don't really have any specific reason to go anywhere. We're probably gonna get killed by something in here, seeing as there's blood coming from this grate. China reaches into the open grate with her hand and finds something smooth. We have found... Uh, something for my inventory management to go out of control with. Some heavy bones. Do we need heavy bones? They're probably junk. But we found some. Yeah, it seems like there's lots of bones down there. Uh oh, something slimy. So, you know, sometimes you'll get random encounters. You could go grinding on enemies, right? So theoretically, now that we're using swords... We should be doing damage to this thing. I don't know why we're missing it so much, but... Oof, poison attack. Gross. I think we paralyzed it with the bite attack. Even though the uh, bite probably does blunt damage, paralyzing is still good. Okay, well, we're getting experience. Uh, so Strange Mind got a level up. That was uh, probably fighter level 5. And anyone else that hit the 16,000 benchmark got fighter level 5. Uh, unless you're multi-class. So, you know, I guess you legitimately could try to grind down here. This is really not my uh, objective or anything, but it's just interesting. I'm going to do a little bit of healing here. Sadly, you know, 
cure light wounds is not really very good at healing. But I'd like to keep everyone kind of out of range of getting instantly killed by something. Like, if you've got 90 hit points, it doesn't really matter. But if you're at 40 or 30, you're, you might be a little bit low. But yeah, we do level up pretty quick. That That is the main reason why I, uh, I... I couldn't remember the exact... Like, you know, it's been a long time since I've played this game. But I... It did filter through that multi-class is better in this old game because, uh, you know, we would already have 46,000 experience if we were a single class character, which would probably be level 6 or even 7 for some classes. And I know level 9 is the level cap, so a single class character just, you know, they basically just cap out in no time. Oh look, there's some grain or something? Yeah. I don't know if there's any point bringing that around with you. This looks like a magic arrow. At the very least, we can sell that. And uh, if we go to our inventory page, we can see what kind of magic arrow that was. Probably that one. So just eight plus one arrows, but it's still worth a lot of money. Uh, I mean, having magic arrows is nice for certain enemies that you need, um, you know, magical weapons to damage them. But honestly, it's worth so much money, I'll be tempted just to sell stuff like that. At some point, we'll find a merchant, and there'll be lovely, lovely things to try to spend our money on. That looks totally... well... what is that? It's got wings, kind of like fish wings. Scaly... it's not like a... it's not like a gargoyle wings, but it's also got the face of like a... a Nilithid or a Mind Flayer, so you know, something terrible, whatever. And then this just leads us back to the entrance. There is some sort of rat man over there, and it seems to be the only direction to go is past the gargoyle thing. Alright, knock knock. Just opens up, easy. Oh joy! Saviors come to free me from my servitude! I will help you kill him! Show you all, yes, yes! Uh... Who are you? I am the master of Watergate, set here to watch. Boring here. I will help you with the killing! Oh, who are we killing? Who are you helping me... You're going to help me kill who? Uh, you are sly not to let on. You seek Dagalar, my master. All the world envy Dagalar. All the world hate Dagalar. The name that makes your master tremble. No fear. I help you with the killing. Right. And uh, where are we exactly? In the tunnels below Dagalar's tower. Here is where he experiments. And here is where his guard is down. You will defeat him while he's unaware. Hmm, what are these experiments? Th here is where Dagalar experiments. I hear screams all the time. Dagalar does not believe in mercy or in any kindness. How are you going to help? I'm slaved here a long time. I've tended every room, all secrets known to me. Many mysteries await the unwary. I'm your map. No others will do. <laughs> sure, you can you can come with us, I guess. Sounds like a trap. I follow, but you must know... Uh, you need necklaces. Only guards can pass the door of eyes. They are east of the lava bridge. They know they have the necklace you need. The door knows me. I do not need. Uh, long have I labored here. I mean, that's a good tip. We need some necklaces to get past an eye of doors. Uh, if you want to find an eye of doors, all you got to do is look over here. Probably a bad place to go without the correct uh, accoutrement. <laughs> but... Uh, the things we need should be over here somewhere on these guys. <laughs> um, there's just nowhere else to go. Like, if you just follow the little map, it's just a bunch of dead ends. I never went up there, technically. Hold on, let's go check this out before we go any further. But Anything on a dead guy? Looks like non-magical shields. You can check with a right click. Yeah, nothing too exciting. Slime everywhere. Did I ever check this little hole? It's just a dark hole. Oh, we've reached into the hole. And found some bones. And nothing. So I believe a lot of these are just kind of random. Like there are sometimes things in them. But if it's anything good, you'll generally get it on the first try, I think. And if it's just a random, it could be like enemy encounter, some garbage, or nothing, or some damage. Those ones are kind of all around the game, and for the most part, I don't think there's anything really important in them. It's just stuff 
It's kind of just flavor, really. Now, there was a sound effect in the background. I have a feeling some door just opened or closed. Or something's happening, anyway. If you can hear the sound effect. Ah, some more arrows aren't a terrible idea. Some money. Now these, hmm, these might be zombies, if I had to take a guess. Yeah, straight up zombies. Well, let's see if our uh, guide will talk to them. No. <laughs> oh well, I've never been scared of zombies, right? I mean, they're totally, totally weak. <laughs> Strange mind. Just killed all of them in a single round. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. So be careful about the eye of... Uh, I mean, we could show off what happens, but... You know, it's it's probably bad. So let's not go there yet. Just check, check in for secrets, right? Uh, a helmet. We don't need helmets. If it only gave you some armor class, then everyone would have one, but... No luck. We're not playing Dark Queen of Crin anymore. Alright, so pretty sure this is where he said the necklaces were, <laughs> aka on some guards, but let's explore around first. There are bones everywhere. Someone keeping the fire running. There's definitely something in the background making a sound effect every so often of clanking. Alright, what do we got? So we found ourselves a little dagger. Now, you might not be able to tell if it's magic or not until it's in a box, basically. I don't expect it's magic. And we certainly don't have a lot of space left, but... I'm pretty sure on the ground you can't really tell. But when it's inside of a box or in your inventory, then you could see if it was like... Like, the animation would, would flicker on if it was magical, I think. Oh, we got bitten. No. But this is why the half-giant tends to be the leader of the party. Because taking, like, three damage on China barely even matters. But some of our lower HP characters would be a little bit more injured. Hey there, Drow. Yeah, this one's, uh, this is oldie. But, um, oh, this door is open. I think this might even just be a graphical glitch. Seems like, no, no, it's open now. I don't know. We walked by it once. It wasn't open. There's definitely some, like I said, there's some glitches in this game every now and then. Get the guard's necklace. They will allow you to pass the door of the eyes by the bridge of memory. Everyone needs one to pass unharmed, except me. The guards silently turn to you. They draw their weapons. Hmm. I'm lost. Yeah totally lost. The guards open their mouths as if to reply, but no word emerges. They all begin to move towards you silently. <laughs> Thanks for the Twitch sub as well, of course. Alright. Now, we don't have anything cool like Fireball yet. We have some spells. I don't expect these guards, in fact, we could double check. I don't think they're very dangerous. We can't actually... Oh, we can see that one. Okay. They're level 5 guards, which is about the same as us, but... I don't think they're going to be that dangerous. Uh, we could try... Well, we could web them. Why don't we see... Oh yeah, that's the trouble is the... Line of sight. The game's, the game's not bad. One of the early kind of... If, if I move a little bit first, we could probably get away with that. We're just, there's just not enough lot of room over here. What if we move a little bit? Nope. That's not gonna work. We're blocked in by uh, our party members. Okay, I see. But yeah, you gotta kinda get a feeling for hitboxes. I think it goes off of where their feet are primarily. So let's say we try to lock up sort of the three in the back there. Let's see if this works. Well, we'll see. Also, I think we can get a backstab here. 
Oh, we can't walk past him. Never mind. Not like it matters. We're super strong. I kind of want them to try to come at us now. Let's put our half giant right in the doorway guarding. Maybe we can get our, uh, no, our insect master can't fit. Well, we can, you know, do some arrow. Ranged attacks are much better than the old gold box games. Looks like they slip. There's probably no, like, sprite for them falling down. But when their movement was, um, interrupted, that, you could say the grease spell was doing its thing there. So if you've got a team with lots of good ranged attacks, even a level 1 spell like Grease could get some good value. But you are kind of fighting the engine a little bit sometimes. Yeah, I mean, they're keep, they're getting locked down pretty well. I mean, just guard here if anyone makes it. Yeah, I mean, I'm not extremely impressed by this strategy, but it does work. Now, we... This is the kind of game where you have, like, ammo management, so we don't have infinite, uh, arrows. So you might not want to use some strategy like this all that often, but... Can't fit by. Can't see. All right. To be honest, this guy has barely made it more than a single step per round, so the Grease spell has been more effective than I was expecting. Now, not that that was going to be very difficult, but we do we did need these uh, necklaces. Oh, we don't have enough space. I'm going to have to do some inventory management here. Uh, everyone needs one, so we're going to... We can leave them off. I don't think there's any disadvantage to leaving them equipped, but they don't really do anything other than get us past a door. Uh, I need to make a little bit more space for everybody, so... Double check my boxes. <laughs> hmm. I think a stone dagger is not really worth holding on to. We'll drop that. And... Well, I guess there's a difference between leather and wooden shields. I didn't even notice. So, I think they have the same armor class bonus. It's just the wood shield's worth a little bit more. So, I mean, I don't think we're really going to use shields anyway, from the looks of things, unless they're magic. So, just open up the inventory slots. And, honestly, leather armor is only worth 10 gold anyway, so we'll just get rid of this stuff. I was just holding on to them until we found somewhere to sell things, but... Who knows how long that'll be. Yeah, we decided to make an all-girl team at some point. Um, they're all really, you know, stacked. I mean, it seems fitting. D&D is filled with, you know, way too many male heroes in the old days, so... <laughs> this is this is the world of Dark Sun, and it's all girls all the time. <laughs> it We haven't really come up with a good team name, but definitely girl power. Uh, yeah, Half Giant Lady. China there. Now she's got a necklace. Our three green... They don't actually get an option, they have to be ladies. So that one is, and then we have a, I think this is our half-elf lady. Um, <laughs> the Miss Grabby from the old, uh, the other game, whatever the name that was. Bonus points if you remember. And of course we brought Blue Anki last for the first time ever. The good old days where men were men and women were men, yes. Good, good reference. <laughs> Alright, so, luckily when we're not in turn, in combat mode, uh, terrain effects don't seem to do anything. Alright, what do we get for our treasure? An extra necklace that we don't need. Uh, this is a skull. I don't think we need that. I don't think we need a bone mace. I might as well try to pick up the arrows. But other than that, I don't think I want. We could pick up the chest and have another box for inventory, but for now, I don't think, I don't know if it's worth it. Well, that one's empty. See, that's a better deal. Let me uh, move some of these arrows around. How's our stack doing? 78? That's not bad. Yeah, 
just cleaning stuff up a little bit here. Inventory management is a little bit of a pain, for sure. But once, eventually we'll have somewhere where we can um, drop things off for like long-term storage. And it won't be so bad. And we can sell off a bunch of our gems and stuff. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, I think that's all we need from here, unless you want to bring the treasure chest with you, but that's okay. I guess we'll let our little friend come up too. Uh, we, we, I put, I put, yeah, everyone's got the uh, amulets equipped. There's definitely, uh, some bad things that will happen on the Bridge of Eyes. I mean, it's a pretty spooky bridge for, uh, 1993. This is the Door of Eyes, constructed by Degolar from those who spied on him. Now they can look and spy all they want, but that is all they can do. The necklace you took from the guards allows you to pass through the Door of the Eyes unmolested. Don't ask uh, Robert what the eyes would do if you weren't wearing those. The eyes on the door glow as if to attack, but the eyes on the necklace you wear grow even brighter. The eye on the doors close and the door opens. Maybe we should have a save here just in case. Maybe I should have saved ahead of time and showed you what happened if you uh, didn't wear your amulets. Alright, uh, this looks totally natural too. Just some creepy, um, sort of humanoid looking statues. <laughs> the door is closing, do not worry. The only way out is to kill Dagalar, but I know you will succeed. There's no option now, you can't leave until he's dead. Hmm. There's a small plaque on the rim of the fountain. Ortel, my most trusted servant. He didn't like to bathe. Oh. So, uh, hmm. Statues, right? Ah, Keldar! Degelar's second in command. Do not trust him, he's insane. <laughs> Visitors, how exciting! Uh, nice hair. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, what, what are you doing here? I, I live here, this is my home. I should be asking you the same question, but you're just going to die, so why should I bother? <laughs> well, I guess we'll be on our way. <laughs> Leaving so soon? I don't think so. You're just a cut on the chase. Let's start, f let's start, f let's start fighting kind of person, aren't you? Well, fine by me. Oh, actually, that's dangerous. Whew. So, he's up. Yeah, it's definitely no good. Okay. So what just happened there? He summoned a bunch of monsters and teleported away. The slimes are a little annoying, we know. The zombies are basically nothing. But these guys, shadows are bad. Um, that's probably the most dangerous, well there's greater shadows, but these are probably the most un most dangerous enemies we'll fight. Most dangerous undead enemies we'll fight. Uh, basically at all, so. I think I'm gonna try to have China deal with them because she's got the whole magic weapon thing. And then the people with not magic weapons will deal with the uh, slimes. Good, we did not get hit. Uh, we're just gonna ignore the zombies because whatever. All right, come on magic weapons. Yes, good, good deal. Come on China, do another one. That's some psionic attack. I don't care. I could have done some buffing and stuff before this fight, but I believe. Okay, kill the last slimes before... They have, like, uh, kind of a web attack and a couple other things. I have a feeling it's fairly likely that people with non-magic weapons can't hurt those shadows at all, so... Uh, if you got this far with no magic weapons, good luck. There might be some magic that would work, but... If you don't have a cleric with turn undead, and even still, it's pretty high level undead. But yeah, that should do. All right, well, zombies, no big deal. Clean things up here. All right, level up. Okay, so strange mind. This is our three cream. 
Um, right, and we were talking a little bit about how to pick good psionic attacks. Uh, I think if I click Enhance, all that does, as far as I, I'm guessing, but I'm pretty sure, all this does is reduce the failure chance by 1 out of 20 of the ability. So it's not that impressive. I mean, early on I've been kind of taking the different buffs. I could definitely see Control Body or Disintegrate being fun. Oops, don't exit. Um, we didn't take up Flesh Armor because I don't know how that's going to work on a 3 cream. Maybe I should try a couple of the met Metabolic ones, but, you know, it'd be nice to have Domination or even Eagle Whip for some uh, chance to stun enemies, which is pretty cool. We picked up Intellect Fortress last time. I, I actually have no idea if these are good picks. I think we were... It's it's reasonable to, to consider, like, Absorb Disease and then Cell Adjustment, so you can um, basically, f nearly for free, cure uh, allies' diseases by giving them to yourself and then just being immune to them, basically. Um, or one of the strength bonuses, just set your strength to 24. It's pretty expensive the way I remember it, but like, that would definitely work on the three cream. Uh, I think we have to take 24 strength, and I think, let's see, there's like, uh, I think there's three different potential buffs here that I'm looking at. Flesh Armor, uh, which I believe will count as a shield even at low levels for free. So it's like plus one or plus two armor class. Graft Weapon, which just takes the weapon in your hand and gives you plus one to hit, I think. And then Body Weaponry would be if... The, the interesting thing for a three Kreen is they have... Like, four... If, if they're not wielding weapons, they get four attacks with their fists. Uh, I was just curious if that would stack with that at all, but... I think I'll try the, the Flesh Armor. So, I think just for interest's sake, I want to I wanna science one of these up. So, we're going to try... We're going to see if Flesh Armor does anything. It, it'll probably just drain our points down, but... Uh, what I'm expecting here is the armor class to go down to negative one or maybe negative two. Just depends on what it does. So that's the effect of flesh armor. And it didn't change the armor class at all. See, that's the trouble. If you don't know... <sighs> that's too bad. So, like, that just... If, if that didn't actually do anything... Then it was just a waste of an ability. Because I don't know... I don't know how that interacts with, like, three Kreen don't actually have any armor, ever, really. They can't equip body armor or chest armor or any of the armor or leg armor. But they do have kind of a natural armor class of five instead of ten. And I guess that interferes with the spell or the, the psionic ability. This kind of sucks. Because we know that displacement worked and biofeedback worked. Those are minus two and minus one. Sadly, this one did not stack. So, I'll just turn it off so we stop draining our points. Worth a shot, but... You know. I guess if you were playing along, don't pick that one on a 3 cream Unless, maybe way later in the game, that helps. So, we're in this big room. I think before... Well, no, this is a dead end. So, we can do this room and this room. We did see um, Kelgar teleport somewhere. Yeah, he's up there. We'll have to go deal with him still. There's whatever this is. Those are foes of Dagalar, whose wills were too strong to be broken. He collected them and fused them together into these sculptures. A symphony of screams and anguish assaults your ears as you attempt to talk to the statue. After several moments, you locate a part of it that can talk coherently. Why are you here? Leave before Dagalar can find you. Does he come here often? Why should he? His tormenting cannot get worse. There's no salvation for the soul when you no longer have one. Yeah, what what exactly happened to you? How can you ask that? Can't you see for yourself? I am a part of this thing. We are 
in here all damned until the end of time. Uh, why? <laughs> I was a Templar under Tukukukukukuk. I was suspicious of Degalar. I followed him once. Once. This is the punishment for my curiosity. This. Oh, why was I so ignorant? Damn, damned until the end of time. So maybe once we deal with Degalar, this will change. They all look a little different too. I think they all say the same thing. Enough that I don't want to waste too much time. Pretty sure. I guess they say slightly different things. I mean, you can you can certainly read along if you're curious, but yeah, I guess they're all different voices, but they're not very helpful because they're all mixed together. I guess I should talk to the bottom right one too, just in case. What happened to you? Dead afterlife. This is like old man face. I was bad. Mm hmm. Degelar's here right now. Hmm. That's interesting. Is he crazy or does he know something we don't know? All around are his creations. The entire place reeks of evil. Ah, oh, they're crazy! In great pain. They know not know what they speak. Listening to them was a mistake. He, Degelar has warped them with his pain and lies. Hmm. I guess we listen to Mao for now. <laughs> Alright, let's keep going. We've already asked him all the things we're going to ask him for the moment. <laughs> it's not like the game designers would give us a fake ally or something in an evil, theoretically, necromancer lair, would they? In the world of Dark Sun, they wouldn't betray our trust, would they? That doesn't seem... <laughs> particularly surprising at all, really. Oh, that looks fun! <laughs> what was that? Is that gonna refresh if I come back? This is a nightmare tapestry. Degelar wove the soul of the victim into the tapestry, trapping the victim in nightmares eternally. You can see the results. Ah, yes. That's what's going on. I don't think we can destroy it or anything. Yeah. Alright. Maybe later, once we've killed Degelar, we can free all these poor souls. <laughs> Over 9,000? Seriously? I guess I should have made a video about that with some memes. <laughs> Alright, so where are we headed? Uh, I guess we have to go north, at least through this room. Oops. Just a little spoiler alert. Things coming up in the future. No fog of war yet. Maybe one day they'll invent fog of war. This looks like just a change room, maybe? No, get out of the way. NPC pathfinding will be the death of me. Alright, now I'm pretty sure this leads us to Kelgar, assuming we can get through this area. Or we could have gone this way through body dumping zone 1 and 2. There is a zombie in that one. Maybe we should, maybe you could talk to him. And then maybe another guard room. Maybe some prisons. Bunch of rooms we haven't been to yet over on this side. Oh, looks like a kitchen. Yummy! Got some more undead. This looks like maybe Degelar's room. He's got a fancy bone piano. Maybe that's Degelar himself, even. We can't see him, though. And uh, more zombies. Of course, there's always zombies. And experiments. Remember, this guy, he likes to do experiments. All right, that's enough spoilers looking ahead. The body dumping zone. We'll, we'll explore the whole place, Robert, don't worry. Gotta get all that experience. All right, Kelgar. Your trap failed. 
Ah, not again. Get rid of this guy. He's crazy. Well, well, back again, are we? Well, no matter. I'll just have to make sure you die this time. We don't want... You, we don't want me to be writing names in the book that aren't from dead people, do we? Why don't you write your name in that book? Why would I do that? Wait, let me guess. You're going to tell me that it would save you the trouble of doing it after you kill me, right? Ah, ah, that one's worthy of me, I must say. <laughs> yes, that's exactly what I was going to say. Well, now. You don't have to say it. I've relieved you of the monumental duty of insulting me. Aren't you really relieved? I've saved you the tedium of speaking. Now I must save you the tedium of life. Um. Alright, go ahead, kill me. I doubt you're going to stand there and let me kill you. So I've arranged for some friends to get rid of you. Enjoy. Hmm. More slimes. Uh, combat? Could you start? Maybe? Yeah. More slimes, more shadows, more zombies. We even paralyzed. Nice. Let's see if I can get rid of this zombie that might be blocking in my half giant. Just to make sure we can walk past. Alright. We don't want to get hit by the shadows. They can they tend to have nasty uh, secondary effects on hits, let's say. Alright, let's start clearing some monsters out here. Good start. Can we get to this one? Heck yeah! Alright. Tactics. Well, sometimes you just miss, but... <laughs> nothing can be done about rolling ones and twos. Now, at some point, we will get more attacks per round. I forget in 2nd Edition, well, in this Dark Sun, the way the game emulates it anyway, how long it takes before you get regularly two attacks per round, but it'll happen eventually, for sure. And it won't be as bad as uh, the old Gold Box 1st Edition type games, where you need to be, like, level 13, 15, something like that. All right, so, oh yeah, level five mage. <laughs> well, there's lots of options here. Uh, actually, vampiric touch is probably better than you'd think in this game. Um, it scales one to six per two levels and uh, steals all the hit points, I think. So uh, it's a pretty good ability. Um, spirit armor, not bad actually. Splint mail, if you weren't a fighter mage anyway. Slows, classically pretty useful. Protection from missiles. Minor Melizen kind of sucks. <laughs> it just lowers the enemy saving throw by one. I think Curse does the same thing to AoE, so yeah, whatever. Minute Meteors are kind of cool. Um, Lightning Bolt is a fan favorite, but difficult to get because of how the ba like the hitboxes are difficult in this game. Uh, Hold Undead is kind of interesting. There's not a lot of undead enemies in uh, Dark Sun. As far as I remember, anyway. But it's generally very difficult to get status effects on Undead, so it's interesting that this would work. Um, but only weak Undead. You have to be less level than the, the caster. So that would be a, a, a argument for a single, cla single, single class preserver uh, mage, basically. Whereas Hold Person just has a saving throw. Haste, of course, doubles the number of attacks, which is always crazy good. Flame Arrow is actually pretty decent damage. Of course, there's Fireball. Uh, Blink's pretty good too, actually. Just uh, after you take your round to attack, after you take your turn to attack, you blink out of existence. And uh, that's pretty good. So you can't get hit after you attack until the next round. Anyway, clearly we want Fireball. But uh, <laughs> just in case. Oh, there's just a little... Uh, that's just graphics. Don't just clear that out. Um, and because of the way the game works, once we've rested, we will be able to cast Fireball two or three times. Don't have to worry about memorization. Yeah, the armor spells are okay if you're a pure mage, because there's not a lot of bracers. Um, but as long as you're a fighter mage, you might as well just have armor. Once you can buy armor, anyway. 
to be fair, right now we have leather armor, so it would actually be an upgrade, technically. But at some point we'll be getting better armor. It's just kind of rare. There's not a lot of metal. Dark Sun world doesn't have a lot of metal. Just the, the general equipment level is pretty poor in this uh, area. I guess we could do a little bit of healing. We've got five spells ready. Try to get over 40 at least here. That's a good one. Maybe throw one on my uh, bug. A little bit more HP there. All right. Cool. Well, we haven't fought Kelgar yet, or we haven't we haven't pinned him down, but we keep dealing with his ambushes. And we found a ring that's worth a little bit of money, and some more arrows. Now, I think you can only check out grates that are uh, open. Also, I'm not going to carry around the bones, but technically you could. That's a gem. And some money. Money in this game, if you forgot, is measured by ceramic pieces. Not really gold, even though I'll probably say it's gold all the time. Alright, China sticks her hand down the hole and finds nothing. And nothing. And nothing. And after four nothings, I decide that there's probably nothing there. Alright, so this... We could kind of explore this north side. Where did Kelgar teleport to? Looks like he's over here. So this is kind of like the boss room, certainly. So that's kind of like the last place I want to go. So I guess we'll clear up this where this sort of section. And then we can work our way down... And then up to the north, up to the top left at the end. That'll be my plan, unless the doors are locked. So I believe this is supposed to be like science time. Dagalar knows many things. He draws water from deep in the ground to run his experiments. Water flows in pipes into the next room. Yeah, this crazy rat man definitely knows a lot of things. About Degelar's experiments. Yeah, we should check this room out, probably. Really? Can't check the books out? Can't check the water out either. For shame, for shame. Alright, well, I don't want to go. We're, we're going to save the the body pit for a little bit later. Let's finish the, the north side up first while we're here. While we're in the neighborhood. And we'll have our little rat friend uh, explain some more to us. Here's where the water boils. Dagalar needs it hot for his experiments. Uh, but I know not why. You're too far from the hole. Okay. Get closer. One nothing. Two nothing. Three nothing. Alright, I'll say three nothings is probably enough to convince me that there's really nothing. Oh, there's something back there. <laughs> there's something down there, too. Alright, a little bit of money. Uh, a two handed bone pole arm. Now, as cool as pole arms are. They're not very good in this game. So, save that for another time. Oh, there's this like evil bunny over there. The animal in the cage hits you. Well, don't stand beside it, I guess. You cannot discern what animal is in the cage, but it is indeed angry. If you get too close, you take a bunch of damage. What about the uh, bunny cage? Yeah, okay. So they're just more like background traps. I don't actually think... I don't think there's anything you can do with them, or at least I don't remember anyway. Nothing seemed obvious. Hello there, Dwagon and Salty Cupcakes. Also, there is still some door somewhere that it's opening and closing in the background. You can still hear it. Just some friendly zombies. Totally non... Uh, Non-hostile. Uh, that might be the first cloak we've seen, but it doesn't actually do anything. 
Not really any point picking this stuff up, given our limited inventory space. We could take a bunch of wine bottles, I guess, but for now, we just kind of mess up my inventory even worse. So we'll just leave this, this is fine. The Chamber of Waters! Deglar mixed steam with magic powers! He uses zombies so he does not lose subjects that he can experiment on. Effects are random. Do not toy with it! Ah, right. I think... Isn't there something you can put into it? Maybe the maybe the water bottle or the wine bottles or something? Maybe not. Maybe not with uh, this guy around is the real thing. Maybe we'll be back here later. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to toy with it, don't worry, but we'll come back. Is this D&D? Yes. Technically. Dark Sun is, uh... Second edition Dungeons and Dragons. Unfortunately, we always have to wait for our little companion to walk down. All right, to the body room. Robert's been waiting for this for, for like half an hour. What do we got? Magic, not magic ring, just a ring. Um, there's probably something else in here. Ooh, money, money. Well, not a whole lot of money, but a little bit of money. Some more bones, we don't really need those. Some gem, not worth a whole lot. And I think at this point we're gonna not... I mean, they are worth a little bit of money, but I'm not gonna bother carrying around everything anymore. I'll pick up gems and gold and stuff like that, but... Another nothing pit. Maybe the, the loot you can get in these is per map, not per uh, grate. And we've already kind of emptied out the area's worth of junk. Now, I was feeling like maybe the zombie in this room would be non-hostile. Bad in there, very bad. I'll not follow you there. Gor Gorbernix in there. Terrible zombie, he is evil, do not go in. I will not come. A small plaque next to the door reads, Gobernix, my only mistake. Uh, we shall go visit Gobernix. I stay. Best if you close the door right now and we leave. I will not enter. Too bad. I'm gonna go chat. <laughs> the door closes behind you as you enter the room. The zombie in the corner turns at the sound and shuffles towards you. Well, he has a name. Let's at least see what he does. Zombies can't hurt us anyway, right? The zombie stops in front of you and looks you over. The stench of decaying flesh is overwhelming. Momentarily, it tries to speak, bathing you with its fetid breath. G g gav ix gav ix. Uh, hi, Gabernix. The, the zombie nods enthusiastically, but not a tremendous amount. As much as it can muster. <laughs> so what are you doing in here? The zombie looks confused, then sweeps his arms slowly around the room, giving you another chance to enjoy the set stench of rotting flesh. Uh, oh. Who were you? Abruptly, the zombie stops trying to speak and reaches into its tattered clothing. It produces a scroll and hands it to you, along with a piece of a finger. You unroll the moldy scroll and read, My brother, please forgive me for what I have done. I know that you may not be able to understand this scroll, but I hope that you will be able to understand why I did this. I could not bring myself to bury you, nor could I forgive myself for killing you. I wanted to hear you tell me that I was forgiven. Not that I can find... But now I find that I cannot muster the courage to face you. I wish that you could understand this, but I fear you are now a mindless creature driven by hunger and little else. My servants will tend to your needs and I will see if I can summon the courage to face you in time. Your brother, Degolar. Uh-huh. So, do you understand this, girl? Gobernerk's lat nods slowly. 
fuck. Fuck. Forgetting memory. You're losing your memory. <laughs> Gobernix nods, losing another piece of his skull. Help me. <laughs> Not happy. <laughs> <No>. Help. <laughs> you want some help? Gobernix points to the door. Okay. You uh, you want me to? You want to go with me? You want to go to Ag Dagalar? <laughs> if, if. All right, let's go see Dagalar. Hey, we got some bonus experience. Don't worry, we'll go there in just a minute. Let me just check this hole. Ah, <laughs> uh, there's probably nothing down here. But you know, you know how it is. Gotta go click things. So Ratman is not gonna be happy. You're back! You have not been killed! Is good! Gobernix afraid of me. Yeah. It is about now that Mo notices who is following you. Gobernix, no, go back! As Gobernix reaches Mao, there's a flash of light. <laughs> Gobernix, I. No, I can't. I'm. I'm sorry. His true form revealed, Dagalar teleports away. Gabernix looks at you and then points to the northwest. Now, we could have spent some more time visiting the rest of the, uh, the lair, but surprise, surprise, the rat man was Dagalar all along. And I'm pretty sure if you didn't do the Gabernix thing, he would have, uh, he would have <laughs> surprised the party <laughs> later. So now we have a zombie friend instead of a rat friend that's actually a wizard not friend. I don't... Do we need horns? I don't even know what these do. They're little seashells. At some point we have to test them out. Okay. Well, we've got a... Couple different directions to go. Well, now we've got Keglar and... Um, so if you remember, this is where Dagalar's sprite was, his, his body was before, but clearly that was just an illusion and uh, we discovered the real him. I guess I'll check this room out. I'm pretty sure if I get into a fight, uh, Gobernix can die very easily because, you know, he is just a zombie. Oh look, shadows. Yeah, I think... The only person that can hurt them right now is our, uh, our half-giant lady. And she hurts them real good, so that'll do. So I think we missed out on a little bit of flavor text, too. If we, if we had brought, uh, well, Dagalar to all these different rooms, he would have explained a little bit more about how it works, but... Is this like my magic six? No. Can't investigate skull piles. Okay, well we never went to this room. Feel a little bit bad. We might have missed some stuff. I don't know. Anyway, let's just keep going. This is one of those games, just like the beginning with escaping the slave pens. There's usually one there's more than one there's usually more than one way to get through a dungeon. You playing Kingmaker again? Cool, cool. I don't think I'm gonna try to finish that game on stream, to be honest. It's just gonna take too long. So we've got a lovely dining table here and uh, some tapestries. So there's also this suspicious wall of fire. Um, <laughs> If you don't have Gobernix, I think it's magical fire damage that just kills you, if I remember correctly. So, Gobernix charred and burned, standing on the pressure plate. Apparently the flames didn't worsen his condition much. His odor has changed from rotting corpse to cooked corpse, but it's not really an improvement. He comes back to your side. Yeah. He's fine, he's fine. You okay there, buddy? Alright, let's keep going. 
maybe we should put a save in here. Maybe I'll just have like a mid save, like a backup. Ah. So let's check the bed chamber first if we can. Gotta go looting. What do we got? We got another one of these dumb amulets we don't need. We've got another bone mace. Another skull. Basically nothing is what I'm seeing. Oh, we ran out of inventory space again, I see. Oh, man. Um, yeah, let's put some stuff away in some of these extra... This is why we should bring more boxes, really. At least until we can sell stuff off. I don't think we need the bone crank ever again, but... There, a little bit more room for somebody. And I've got some more space, too, even. But uh, I, I do like to pick up the arrows, at least. Because we can just equip those, and that'll work. I think... I want to bring another box with me, so let me just clear this one out. Leave some of the garbage on the ground. And take another box. I think we're going to aim to go, like... Probably up to, like, four boxes per person at some point. Just so that we don't have to leave so much on the ground later on, but... You know, inventory management at some point, it's gonna be a real problem. So there's some interesting stuff in this this area, but I don't think there's much we can do with it. Maybe if we... No, I don't think you could... I don't think we could have the rat man here, because you, I think you have to bring the zombie to get through that fire door. And uh, to do that, you have to lose your uh, guide. All right, let's do this thing. Maybe should have buffed up, but that's why I saved just in case. Gabernix, you're helping these slaves. Why? Gabernix steps towards his brother, arms open wide. No, Gabernix, don't come closer. I'm warning you. Please don't make me. Gabernix steps up to his brother, arms still open wide. I'm warning you, Gabernix. Please don't. Gabernix reaches for his brother, enclosing him in his arms. But before Gabernix can touch him, Degalor's eyes glow and Gabernix disintegrates into dust. Interestingly enough, Gabernix was not moving as if to attack, more as if to embrace him one last time. Degalar looks at you, shaking with rage. You have made this happen! I wouldn't have had to kill him if you weren't involved. You've murdered my brother by coming here. For this, you will suffer eternally. I will see to it. Keldar, quiet all this time, finally speaks up. Master, calm down. It was only a rotten corpse. Your brother. Keldar never gets to finish his sentence. Degalar merely glances at him, and Keldar disintegrates as well. 400 damage. Ouch. Never talk about my brother that way. Never. Degalar turns from Keldar's ashes to face you. You, slaves, you'll suffer the same fate as Gobernix and Keldar. Now I'll put an end to you once and for all. And he summons a whole bunch of slimes. All right. So, he's a pretty high-level mage. Uh, as much as all of these slimes are slightly dangerous, I think if we're going to do anything, we have to try to deal with him immediately. If we want to have any chance. Sure wish I had a fireball spell right now. Now, it might be worth trying to just summon something to, to cause some trouble. I actually kind of like that idea. We could try Stinking Cloud on him. Tech traditionally good against mages, but he's a very high level mage. Uh, what do we think is going to work here? I think we try Stinking Cloud. But I try to cast it in such a way that... I can still walk to one side of them and hit them. I don't think it'll work on the slimes anyway, so... This should affect him, but I can come in from the left side and still smack him. It may not have worked anyway, but we'll try. Alright, go Strange Mind, go. Get him.
Oh, that is so good. <laughs> 12,000 experience. Uh, that's it. He's dead. That's another 12,000 experience. Don't mess with a three green. Wow, that that was that was real good, guys. Didn't need that magic at all. Okay, well we got to clean some stuff up, but uh, we're off to a fine start to this fight. For all the interesting things that can happen on this battle, uh, we got real lucky there. Uh, there's actually quite a ways to do this dungeon. If you don't discover that, um, oh, we're all we can't attack here. That's not good. If you don't discover uh, that the Rat Man is actually Degalar, I'm pretty sure he eventually captures you <laughs> and tries to do experiments on you, and then you'd be teleported around to the other areas and uh, have to escape or something like that. Now, we're getting annoyed by things here. I wonder if this will work. Yeah, spell spell boxes are tricky. I don't think fire did any damage. That sucks. So she can't attack. I wonder, can you cast magic if you can't attack? Looks like it. We have to do something here. They're immune to acid as well. That's great. Uh, Alright, it's, it's all up to you, Strange Mind. That's not good. Too many psionic slimes. This is uh, not looking great. I mean, the first round was great, but after that, it's been downhill. Maybe what I should try to do is put on... Uh, what I should have done originally was put on Mind Blank. That will eventually get us out of this nonsense. Now you're stuck in the web, but again, once we're uh, immune to psionics, it will be less annoying. Alright. Seems to still be taking damage. Alright, Miss Krabby, what are you gonna do? Um. I guess if they're immune to fire, the fire elemental won't even help us. We need to start hitting them with like a melee attack. There we go. It seems to be the best way to kill them, but... But you're surprisingly tanky, I guess, you know? Alright, there we go. There we go. Now that we start thinning them down, it'll, it'll start looking alright. Also, having a couple people mostly immune, that did a lot of damage. Whatever that ability was, that was really brutal. Um, sheesh. Over 50% of her HP in a single hit. Whatever attack that was, that's nuts. Psionics, man. Uh, so people who are not psionics themselves don't have the ability to just mind blank themselves like that. Well, technically they might be able to try, but it looks like... can't use any spells at all. I wonder why not. Some kind of effect must... It doesn't show it on the list, but something is affecting Miss Grabby. Strange Mind still can't move, but it doesn't need to move right now. Blue Ankylas is stuck, which kind of sucks. Uh, acid Arrow doesn't work. Flame Arrow doesn't work. Is there any... I guess Magic Missile would maybe do a little bit of damage? Um, it's not that amazing. Trying to put more blank. Yeah. People who aren't Scion Assists are going to have a hard time mind blanking, even if they know it. Alright, 
right, Mr. Grabby's at 7 HP, still alive. I think at this point it might just be safer to try to do that. Yeah, she got it. It seems like, well, sometimes they move and do a melee attack, but they, they don't usually. Three people with mind blanks, pretty good. Sheesh. Gotta kill these things before they hit her. Because of their acid damage, if they hit her, she's likely to just die. Alright, there we go, that's good. And... Okay, stuck in mind blank, that's fine. Hey, magic missile does work. Ah, oh, the web should have walked around it manually. Eh, that's not bad. We killed one with magic missile. It could be a lot worse. Still stuck. This has been a pretty tough fight. I got us, and we killed the boss in the first round before he did anything, and this has still been a pretty tough fight. Uh, let's try to get out of one-shot range here if we can. And then, what else can we do? You're the only one that doesn't have Mind Blank on, I think. Power check failed again. Well, whatever it was that did, like, 38 damage... We don't want a repeat of that, basically. Alright! Whew! Level ups, everybody! Good boss fight. I didn't even prepare for it. We could have put on a bunch of abilities, but... I don't think armor class would have made a huge difference, because... Most of their attacks were, uh, psionic. But, starting everyone with Mind Blank on would have been a nice idea. So this is China, uh, level 6. Uh, we could power up something, or... We only get one ability this time, that kind of sucks. Um, boy, Disintegrate would be cool. It might be worth more people with Intellect Fortress to help protect the non-Psionics at this point. Because I think that's the way this works. But you have to be pretty close, like it's got a pretty small range. I think that's... There's a bunch of psychic defenses. I don't know exactly how they work. But there's a lot of things that say ward against, like, enemy psionics. Um... That one's in resistance to mind affecting, like charm. Some of them say that you can use psionic abilities. Some of them say you can initiate one more psionic power. You know, like... I don't know exactly which ones are better for what. Um, six points of damage doesn't seem like much. I think the uh, strength booth still caps at 24. So even if you're at 24 strength and you use this, you won't go any higher, I don't think. I think light Lend Health might not be terrible. I should try it out on my person that has a ton of HP, basically. And then... Looks like we get one more power for China, it looks like. Oh, maybe these are... No, no, I think the person that shows up here is the person who got the level up. It's just weird that they split up the... the, uh... the psionic level into two different points. The thing is, as much as China will be a higher level psionicist, her stats aren't really good for... non-constitution powers. Now, what's a constitution power or not? Hold on. This is where... unless you have a manual, you're never gonna know. Um... Just to give an idea of what we might want to use... In the Cyclokinesis line... Technically, Detonate is um, an AoE constitution score power. That's not the... it's not much damage. 1 to 10 AoE. But Disintegrate is Wisdom, which won't be very good. 
Project Force is okay. It's long distance. Ballistic is con. Control body. Maybe we should try co control body. Con minus two. That's not bad. Yeah, I think we'll try that. Control body. Maybe the color of the picture tells you which one's which. Oh, so many level ups. Well, we're definitely going to take double fireball. I mean, maybe there's scrolls of fireball. Do you think there's scrolls of fireball? I can't see why you would not have two people with fireballs. I mean, haste is really good, too. Hmm. If you knew ahead of time what the scrolls would be, you could, uh... You, you know, you could avoid some, but, uh... Let's take haste for now. So we've got one person with haste, one person with fireball. And there we go. We won. Not too bad. Uh, we definitely got a lot of level ups. Like, pretty much everyone leveled up everything there. Level 666, 656. Yeah, that's... Uh, this is like after the entire end of Champions of Kryn. Like, an entire game in in the, uh, the Gold Box series. And we're already that much experience in just doing the first couple areas. All right, what about this uh, wizard? What do you have? Dagalar's Wand, which casts Control Body, Psionic Ability. We've got a plus three dagger that does something. And we've got a Living Cloak that gives you, I believe, Inertial Barrier for free. And maybe something else. There's also a Boring Staff, some fruit. Oops. Should really take that fruit with you, I guess. And a lemon. The lemon will let you restore psionic points. Very good for dangerous battles. Ah, oh, we're out of inventory room again. Alright, well let's put some equipment on maybe and then we can pick up more. I just I thought I just cleared my inventory a little bit and it's already it's already full. So I think a metal dagger that does something. We'll just let uh, one of our, I guess technically Blue Anculas is our fighter mage thief. So it kind of makes sense that she'd have that anyway. And then um, inertial barrier is protection from breath weapons. She also has the lowest HP, so that's probably fair. So she gets the cool cloak, and then we can see exactly the effects it has, which is just... Apparently, it's just protection from missiles, actually, but, you know, hey, it could be worse. Maybe... Maybe you have to use it or something to get that? I don't know. So, we got the dagger, the cloak, and the wand. Is there anything else we picked up? We're not carrying these bones anymore. I'm tired of that. Uh, we got some boring rings, more arrows. I think that's it. So a little bit of magic items, not too crazy. Oh, I didn't pick up the lemon, right. Also, this guy has a book that does something. A uh, pendant that we don't care about. We can get rid of all of those now, I think. Uh, Obsidian Longswords, Brigandine Chest Armor, all this stuff is the same as what we're currently wearing. I'm pretty sure. So Kelgar really didn't have anything special. And our current armor is plus two from the body, and then plus one from the uh, leg and arm armor. And I'm pretty sure everyone's already got that. So until we get, you know, plus three body armor and plus two to the leg and armor, Leg and arm armor, then the other... The different flavors don't really matter. Okay. I think that wraps this place up. And yeah, we definitely missed out on some of the potential cutscenes in here, for sure. The device of Takutakutake looks similar to an organ. Pipes protrude from the top, and the panels loaded with buttons. Try as you might, you can't operate it from where you're standing. Play the piano. The organ. A cataclysm of screams and anguish assaults your ears and racks your brain. 15 damage. 
<laughs> Figures. Alright, well, we definitely killed Dagalar anyway. I do feel a little bit bad that we didn't show off the, uh... Some of the... Some of the interesting events, but it's alright. Ah, uh, we found a wand of magic missiles? Yeah. Oops. That's not what I meant to do, but... Okay. Wand of magic missiles. Take that. Another lemon when life gives you lemons. Stone dagger. A ring of project force. I'm not sure how that works. But we'll take it. That's another hound necklace. And a scroll that will teach mirror image. Level 2. Of course we're out of inventory space. It looks like a ring, but I guess you can't equip it? Interesting. So, you know, me and wands, uh, I like to hoard them and then eventually forget about them. <laughs> Classic Blue Anki little trick. So she can learn, uh, we can have Blue Anki last learn Mirror Image, nothing wrong with that. Learn the spell. I think I had another scroll somewhere that I didn't memorize that I should have. Let's just get that memorized wherever it is. There is Keldar's book. We don't know what it does. And then there's another scroll. We don't know what it does either, to be honest. I wonder if we can get these things identified somewhere. Stop carrying around these bones. Yeah, I don't know why I was carrying around these clubs. That was dumb. Whoever decided to carry those around, that was, that was a bad idea. Just things I picked up in the early game. Uh, Alright. We might want to save before we uh, use those unknown magic items, but... There you go! Um, I mean, I guess we need to end the episode fairly soon. I think all the enemies just disappeared when you killed Dagalar. Uh, let's do a quick travel through the area and see if there's anything to pick up, but... Yeah, other than missing out on some events truth is, we've uh, done what we needed to do. And this was like a side area, so, you know, you, you didn't have to come down here, but you probably should. What do we got? Nothing. More hound necklaces. Some more arrows, I guess we'll take. That's about it. I guess we could go back and talk to some of those, uh, some of those people earlier on, the, the people that were trapped. See, I have memories, like, I don't think, I don't know how I accidentally got through this so quickly. Um, I remember as a kid playing this and getting stuck down here for a lot longer. Maybe I just killed the zombie when I ran into it rather than letting it out or something. And then I end up, you know, not taking the shortcut through it. I definitely would, uh, I would suggest if you're playing along, not doing a let's play exactly. Maybe, uh, take some more time and... Explore all of the potential cutscenes and interactions a little bit more. There was definitely some people that were here before. It's kind of a shame that they're all... Like... They just disappear. You don't even get to talk to them. I assume basically everyone you ran into down here would have been... A villain that either attacks you or... Pretends to make friends with you and then attacks you later. Because that's kind of the name of the game in this lair. More arrows. Probably have enough arrows by now, I suppose, but... Okay, I think that's... We pretty much did the full circuit now. One of the things was, as well, we were stuck down here um, until 
Until we killed Degalar, we actually couldn't get out. So we would have had to do all of these events. And I know there's things that happen up here and in this big room. We just missed them. Oh well. Hopefully we didn't miss anything too important. Yeah, a little bit like, uh, there's some might and magic overlap with these bird things, yeah. Oh yeah, I was going to talk to the statues. Now that we killed Dagalar, maybe these things will be friendlier. So, also, this guy was correct. He's like, Dagalar is right beside you. And, uh, surprise, surprise. Yeah, we already killed Dagalar. I, I wasn't expecting, uh, random crazy statue people to really know anything that happened, but... All right. I feel like it'd be nice if you could break them free. If you're playing as a paladin or something, you could, you know, put their souls to rest or something, but not so much. Not in Dark Sun, anyway. We're not in Faerun anymore. <laughs> All right, let's head up and uh, just out of here, I guess. Good times. So before we end the episode for the future tubers, since we uh, sort of wrap that area up, let's at least exit the sewers here because we've we've got we're kind of backtracking to last stream now. But the whole point is we we're trying to escape from the slave pens, and uh, if you remember, there was like the main exit and then the secret exit, and uh, because I've shorted you of all this extra content this time. I will at least save and show you what happens if you go to the main main exit without going to the secret exit. Because I should do that at least one optional thing. Stop right there, slave! So suddenly there's a bunch of guards up here. That's, I think that's really all it means. You might also look at these guys as free XP. Although, you probably get more experience for exiting through the secret, to be honest. Am I ever going to stream more randomizers? Maybe. I also have, like, a million games I'd like to stream one day, so... When any of these will happen, it's a mystery. Next time I'm in the mood is the easiest answer. Oh, look! More guards have appeared! Hmm. It's a good thing I saved it. Sadly, these guys I don't think give you very much experience compared to the uh, the stuff we were fighting down in Dagalar's lair. So it's definitely possible that, uh... Oh, she's got protection from missiles! <laughs> ah, she can sit there all day, they can't even hit her. That's great. Uh, we're getting some good value out of that cloak already. Alright, you can't get anywhere. Start pounding these guys into pulp. I'm not actually 100% sure if they spawn in forever or not. I don't think they do. And the fact that they prioritize... This guy is just out of here. They uh, they prioritize ranged attacks over melee attacks. Doesn't help them out much. Hey, uh, where are you going, buddy? You, uh... You, what's, what's going on here? <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Can't have you running away and letting people know uh, what's going on. <laughs> nice try. Anyway, that's what happens if you go to the main end exit. That does not happen if you go to the secret exit. So we'll just go to the secret exit. <laughs> Clearly we're strong enough though that even the main exit is fine. That was pretty pathetic. 
And with that, we are finally out of the slave pens and the sewers, and now we're in the slave fields, which is totally different. Uh, I believe if we took the main exit, we would have come out somewhere else. Maybe one of these ones on the bottom. Doesn't really matter. The truth is, we won't be here very long. This is not a very interesting map the way I remember it. This is a this is going to be a short map, I'm pretty sure. So, anyway, next episode for the future tubers, we will uh, explore the slave fields after the slave sewers and the slave pens. But uh, one day, we'll get to the open world exploration phase, I promise. Thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.